Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. This is going to be the long awaited uh, I do cars rip off style video where I'm going to autopsy this 3.6 liter Panastar engine that came out of a 2017, I think it was a Chrysler Pacifica that, uh, well, it broke, it blew up. This thing came in once upon a time with a cylinder three misfire and it was supposed to go to the dealership to see if there was any kind of warranty regarding that misfire. I, I figured there was some kind of a cylinder head issue, like a leaking valve seal or something like that. And a couple days later, uh, it broke a, a connecting rod off and smashed a hole through the side of the block. We ended up pulling the uh, oil pan down and we found a bunch of metal pieces of the engine block and we found some uh, connecting rod pieces, but uh, no wood damage other than that. The crank wasn't broken, the bearings weren't broken, um, all that we know is there's holes smashed in both sides of the engine block and we had found part of the connecting rod which was bent and wedged against one of the crankshaft counterweights. Uh, we can see inside here the bearings on this are pristine so it did not suffer a bearing failure. Uh, what I would like to know is how did this rod end up breaking, what happened and what failed. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to wheel this thing inside and we're going to perform the autopsy on this 3.6 Pentastar V6. So uh, let me get this thing moved inside. I'm gonna put you guys up here for a minute. We're gonna roll her in, get it under the light, get it next to a table, and start stripping this thing down to the bare bones and see what happened inside of this particular engine. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Hi Dave. Hey. Opening Z hood. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Engine stands are rolling. So yeah, we're gonna bring this over here into the light next to the tools and uh, we'll get her torn apart. That's good. Cool. Alrighty, so I guess the best place to start is gonna be top down, obviously. We've been in the bottom, of the, bottom end of this thing before. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we found uh, what broke, but we never found out what caused the break. So we're gonna pull off the valve covers We're gonna pull off this lower intake manifold We're going to remove the oil cooler assembly from the valley that valve cover and then um, Then we'll pull the cylinder heads off and take a look inside and see what has become destroyed I'm gonna try to save maybe whatever I feel is necessary or or worth saving rather so we'll try to save maybe the coils um the valve covers themselves are probably savable, but I don't know if I have a use for them. Um, maybe, maybe I'll put them on a shelf and then one day I'll, uh, I'll have a need for one of these, but I, I really don't know. I'm gonna try to not hoard pieces of this because after all, it is just a Pentastar. And there's billions of them out there and half of them are blown up. So I don't, I don't really know, don't really have a plan, but we're gonna pull this down and find out. If memory serves, it was cylinder three that had blown up, and that is gonna be, I think this is number three, the cylinder right here. So we'll pull apart the blown up side first and, uh, and see what's going on in, the, in there. So we've got the uh, eight mil coming in. Let's go ahead and get all these uh, cover bolts off. Super high speed. Okay, a couple more here, and that should do it for all the perimeter bolts. If this thing's gonna come off. Yeah, negative. Pry bar. Need your pry bar it apart. Let's get under it with the. Uh... No, that's not working either. There, easy way. We'll pry bar it from the camshafts. Why not? It's all blown up anyway. Destroy. Sort of. What are we stuck on? Why are we not coming off? Yeah, okay, it's something over here on this side holding us up. I'm thinking maybe this uh, PCV hose thing right here. That might be it. More pry bar. Yeah, that could have been it. That's definitely hanging on to the end of that cam. Let's pry this up, see what she does. Maybe these sensors are hanging us up too. It's very much a possibility. Come off. Yeah, it's... That guy right there, that's doing it. Okay. 
Okay, that's a Torx 30 right there. Let's switch out our tools. Pull that unit out. Yeah, that was holding on to it, okay. Now it's mostly free. Here we go. Okay, under the valve cover, there's not much help here. Cams look okay. Timing chains are good. A little bit of sludge and stuff built up in here, but the valve train is still in it. And this is number three. Yeah, it's the one in the back center cylinder. So this is still our affected cylinder, but I've got no indicators of a failure here. So let's keep digging. Let's get some of this uh, extra nonsense off of here. We've got a couple harness bolts that are grounds to the cylinder head. We'll pull those guys off. Drop that thing out of the way. In the box of trash for you. That harness is broken. We can't reuse that. There's, I don't think there's anything here that's really reusable. So lower intake. Don't need that. So this other valve cover, that one's already disconnected and unbolted. So we're just going to pry this thing out. And same as the other side, I don't see any, uh, any valve train damage in here. The, the followers didn't fall out. Lifters are still there. So the top side is not destroyed. Okay. Let's see, more bolts for me. Let's pull this uh, EGR cooler looking thing out of here. I think that's what this is. EGR. There we go. Are you detached? That's a negatory. Another one back here. Okay, that's our cooler. It's leaking coolant froze to the box with you. And I'm gonna fetch a couple pig mats for all my spillages here so I'm not tracking coolant and nasty stuff all over the floor. That would be bad. Alrighty. Next, I think I want to let's pull the cams out of this thing, get the timing chains off. Maybe should we uh should we cut the cams out of it? For the saw, or should I actually disassemble it? What do you guys think? Hmm. I'll tell you what. Let's just disassemble it. Why not? It should be coming apart fairly easily. All the accessories are gone. We'll hit it with impacts and pull it all, all apart. That should not be a problem. All right, 27 millimeters. Nope. Tell you what, let's do a battery change. This one's not dead, but it's also not the, uh, the factory battery that goes in this. Switch that out to another one. There we go. Ooh, look at that, flung oil everywhere. Okay, now this may not need a puller, okay. Pull the crank pulley off, that's savable. So we have a couple of pulleys here. Let's get rid of these guys. I missed the box on that one, oops. There's two, let's get our tensioner, and then we can pull, oh, here we go. A big bracket right here. That's a good bolt to keep. More impact needed. We can trade this up to the 3 8 gun. There we go, more steam. Okay, what's next here? We've got, we've got a thermostat housing. I see no reason to not pull that off next. That's just three more 10 mils, looks like. I hope it's done spilling coolant. I think so. Okay, there's our thermostat. That's a proprietary thermostat, so you can't just put in anything. You've got to get the one that actually goes to it. That's good to know. And we've got this thermostat housing looking deal here. Or water outlet or whatever. Well, what's valuable to me are all these fasteners. We're pulling this out next. I want the bolts. Save those for later. You never know when you need some bolts. There we go. I think that's all of those. Pop this guy loose, pull the gasket out with it, 
and looks like the water pump is going to be next. Okay. Let us get this coolant hose thing cut off and out of the way. I'm not going to spend an incredible amount of effort taking this apart in a fashion that could go back together. We're going to do this junkyard style. Back in with the 10 milli. This side, this piece is definitely going to spill some coolant, I think. Get rid of you. A couple more. Three to go. Bing! Fries are done. Remember that old uh, Burger King commercial, wasn't it? Ding! Fries are done. I think it was BK. Uh, another. This is 13 right there. I missed it. No matter. How about now? Water pump removal complete. Oh, look at that. Look right there. That was a leaker. See that? That's not okay. And that right there. Surprised this thing uh, didn't overheat when it ran. That's not okay. Junk. Okay, let's move this thing over slightly or rotate it some or whatever. I want to get to this area over here. We're gonna pull off this tensioner, this side of the timing cover, and I don't know why, but there's maybe there's two timing covers here. Perhaps there's a cover over a cover. I've actually never had one of these apart this far, but I think this is a cover over a cover. So let's pull off our first cover here and then uh, we'll see what's underneath of that. All right, so let's get this little tube business out of here. I think that's a 13. Get rid of that. And then tensioner, that looks like a 17. Grab the socket here. Okay, more 10 millimeters revealed. This is okay, I guess. More fasteners for my inventory. Pull these guys out. There's another 17 there. I think that's all of the perimeter bolts with the exception of these two big ones. Slippage. 16. Yeah, oh, that's the wrong socket. That's a 16. Fail. I wonder if this is one of those cars that takes a new size socket for like almost everything we do. Before you know it, you've got every toolbox or every tool from your box removed. All right, pry bar action here on our first cover. I think it's a, it's a part. Or no, this isn't two covers, like a cover over a cover. This is all one big cover. Now I see. I see what we're doing here now. Three more fasteners on this side. I felt that two timing covers was kind of weird, but you never know. With these Chrysler Mercedes Ram, Dodge, Fiat, whatever, whoever made them, Jeeps never know. I believe this cover assembly is completely disconnected. Yep. She's loose. And there is our timing system. So this looks to me like we've got three timing chains in this engine. Got one down below that runs the oil pump. There's our oil pump and its drive gear. That's the chain guide and there should be a tensioner somewhere in there for that chain oh no 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 look four chains there's a chain from the crank that goes up to this shaft with that tensioner then there's this chain running down there with that tensioner and then you've got an individual chain for each bank of camshafts on either cylinder head with that tensioner and that tensioner right there and the rubber has come off of that tensioner okay well, let's, uh, let's pull this guy off. We'll pull this chain off, then we'll pull that chain off. And that should be enough to uh, start to pull the cams out. 
then we can pop these cylinder heads off. Back to the Torx bit again, T30. Okay, need a manual ratchet. All right, coming back in, we've got the bigger ratchet here, or the manual ratchet rather. Let's crack all these guys loose. get the ones on the other tensioner up top as well. Any other Torx bits I need to pay attention to? Yep, there's some on the guides. Let's get those loose. Oh, there we go, and then one more right up here. Okay, yep, those are all for the chain guides now. We can go back to these tensioners. Put some tension on our tensioners. Uh, safety squints. There we go. Okay, that one's out. And there's one of the guides. The guide looks pretty good. Okay, let's get this other guide off since the bolt's right in front of us right here. And our tensioner right here. It's still under tension. That's fine though. And it's leaking some oil. Ping. Maybe this side over here. I don't know. Perhaps the valve springs have some tension on the chain, like it's trying to turn. I uh, nope, more guides. I'll take these off. If I get that guide to flop around, then I know there's no tension. That guide looks okay as well. Okay, there is our chain for one cylinder head. Get rid of that guy. And this other side. That one's a little, that one's kind of stuck. I'm so glad I don't have to put this back together. That would be, I wouldn't enjoy that. I mean, we wouldn't be this far along in the project if this was a, a job going back together. So I guess I can't complain too much but I can complain about how this is supposed to come out of here. Oh, there we go. With some grace and finesse, Ray, you can't pry bar everything. There we go. That's our other chain there. Bust that aside in our, in our junk pile. So now the front end is stripped off of timing components. Let's go back around to the top side, and start pulling the camshaft out. All right. Let's go ahead and move back around to this side here and we can start to pull these cams out. So we're back to our Torx bit again. And I know that these guys are gonna be kind of super tight. So we'll do that with the ratchet here. I'm just uh, not convinced that the impact will break these dudes loose or not. Yep. And the reason we need to pull the cams is we need to get to the bolts that bolt the cylinder heads down and we cannot do that yeah put the cams in place there we go it's half of them multiple unclicks go back to the impact here slippage bearing face looks good so there was a, I don't think there was an oil starvation event
that. Can we stuff? Uh, fry bar. There we go. It got a little wedged in on that front uh, front surface there. Just a little. Set these guys aside. Gravity. Okay, so there's one of our rockers. That's the one that fell out. That rocker appears to be intact. That one's good. There goes the lifter, it came with it. Okay. So this is all the cylinder three components right here. Or these are these cylinder three components. And I am just gonna set these aside for closer examination later if we need to. But it looks like we have no failures up top. So let's pull the rest of this valve train out. Got the rockers. And if they come out, we'll pull the lifters with it. If the lifters stay in the cylinder head, then uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay, coming in with the 15 millimeter on the half inch impact. We're gonna pull the cylinder head bolts next. Get these guys out of here. In theory. Wow, that's tight. If this gun can't do it, then uh, I better take the extension off and try again. There it goes. went. Can't reach that one. Okay, two up in the front. I cannot reach. My snout is too large to fit in the hole, but try that extension one more time. Aha, that one. Last one. Do it. head bolts have been removed they're unbolted rather they're loose so let's pop these guys out there we go I think there's just eight of them I don't think there are any others on the front side anywhere okay now we need more pry bar action let's crack this head loose let's see if we can't get it to come off oh it's already fairly loose okay Good. So, up we go. Come on, cylinder head. What do we have here? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I see something broken. Well, let's see. Let's investigate this a little bit further here. That's our cylinder three. That's the one that was affected. Uh, what I was originally concerned with was a valve seat falling out of it or it dropping a valve or something. And that does not appear to be the case. We can, however, see there's some damage to the combustion chamber here and here, but nothing really horrible inside of this head. These actually might be decent heads that could be uh, reused. Yeah, I think these heads are okay. But over here, we're not seeing much of anything we didn't already know. Got a cracked piston. I see a chunk missing out of it. See that chunk right there that's gone? Big old crack running down it. But what I'm not really understanding is why is this piston cleaned and the others are pretty dirty. Like this one, you can see all this carbon and whatnot built up on it. Look at all that right there. Same thing on that one there, but this one is clean. Now I know we were boroscoping this engine before it blew up and we did not have that problem. 
it was not cracked and this was not steam cleaned. I'm wondering if maybe, you know what? What if it's overheating or the thing overheated and it had a cylinder head gasket let go and it was getting coolant inside of there and then it hydro locked. Yeah, it could have done that because that piston is pretty super steam cleaned. And what I had thought were uh, impressions from the valves uh, did not appear to be impressions from the valves unless uh, somehow this piston got pushed up all the way and it just ran into the bottom of the combustion chamber. That's that's a possibility. And then the valves were just coming down and hitting it, pushing it back down. That could have occurred. Uh, really hard to tell. Uh, let's go ahead and move over to the other side. We're gonna pull this other cylinder head off and then flip this unit over and uh, we can get access to the bottom side. We'll push this piston out and then examine those rings a little bit further. So bear with me, we got one more head to pull off and then uh, we'll get this thing flipped and the autopsy will continue. All right, over here on the bank two side, we've got this bracket business. Let's get rid of that. Probably could have left it there, but it doesn't need to be there. And I switched out this Torx to a short one that appears to take these bolts out. So I went from two steps to one step. Efficiency. Aha, gotcha. Okay, cams are loose. Let's pop these guys out. Now, normally we'd have to keep these in order because they would have to go back in the same order, but uh, I'm junking all of this, so they're not staying in order. Don't care. And then our cams. These guys can come right on out. There we go. We'll pull all of valve train components and just like the other side I see no uh, catastrophic failures here this stuff is all in good shape so it was not a contributing factor to the destruction of this engine I thought it was going to be valve train re related but it's not because the valve train looks great in the box all right let's get the remainder of these cylinder head bolts out and we'll pop this one off, check the other side. I'm mostly having to pull this off just for weight management. That way we can roll this block over and upside down. Nope. Yeah, nope. Okay, losing. Ooh, that socket's getting hot. Losing the extension. Get on there, please. Oh, that one doesn't fit. All right. Things on there. Okay, all but one. Try one more time with this extension. Look at that, came right out. That's weird, yeah. Pry bar action. We'll crack the head loose. Lose some coolant. A little bit of spillage going on, no worries. There she is. And similar to the other side, we've got a bunch of crusty carbon buildup, but nothing crazy going on here. Okay, let's flip this unit upside down, pull the pan back off of it, and then we can pop that number three piston out and take a look at the rings. So what we need to do is pull this bolt out right here. That's what's keeping us uh, upright. And we'll just flip her right on over. If it gets away from me, I'm running away.
<laughs> Did you hear all those pieces flopping around in there? That's not okay. That's metal chunks. And we need more absorbent mats for this Exxon Valdez that I've just created. Mixed with a little bit of coolant. It's gross. Not great for the floor. It's an OSHA violation. There. Let's throw some extra in there just for fun. Okay. Now on the oil pan, I think we've just got... It's like just one bolt holding the thing back on. Yep, that one there. There are no others. We can see some of the damage that has occurred to this engine block and oil pan. That's from the rod swinging around and smacking into everything after the rod broke. Yep, more metallic pieces. Look at that piece of a, there's a connecting rod piece. That's a good one. That's connecting rod. That's the piece that attached to like right here somewhere. And I don't know where the rest of it is. Probably still in the block somewhere. Okay, so what we need to do is reach down and find the bottom of that piston with the pry bar. And we're going to just kind of push it down. And I need to catch it on the bottom side here. One hand's gonna catch it, one hand's gonna push it down. So let's see here, because I don't want it to break or fall apart. And I want to examine the rings and whatnot. Oh, that piston's uh, not in good shape. Wow. Here, let's uh, get this head gasket off. It won't pass through the gasket. Yep, there's our pry bar. And we have a piston stuck in a head gasket here. Some pieces falling out of it. Oh, well, we have pieces of a piston. It was formerly a piston and it's very stuck. What have I done? I don't know. The rings have expanded and captured. It's captured the gasket. I'm just trying not to cut myself here. There we go. Okay, yep, that's our broken piston. To the bench with us. Let's go take a look at this unit. Okay, so we've got the rod that we recovered in a previous video. Piece of a rod. And then, right here, is our broken into pieces piston with the other piece of the rod. And I'm assuming that one connected there and then here, so that might be the entire rod. I don't think it's broken in more than one place or more than that, two places. Yeah, this thing's totally broken apart and falling apart, that's the retainer ring for the wrist pin. So it looks like this engine has floating wrist pins. I wanna take a look at that pin and see if uh, it's all stored up at the area where the, the rod rides onto it. I'm wondering if this rod was actually bent and it just put a bunch of crazy side load on it until it broke the piston. Really hard to tell. Now all the rings are here. It's got the oil control rings and the, uh, the oil control ring and the two compression rings. So those are all present and accounted for. So a ring didn't come apart, I don't think. Yeah, that's our middle ring and top ring. That's intact, so we did not lose a ring. All we know is we have a broken and bent rod and a broken piston. And still not much explanation for how we got there. Ah, uh, there it is. And the oil rings are usually three pieces. Yeah, that's uh, too small. And then it's got this corrugated ring, like two super thin ones sandwiched on the outside of the corrugated. That's what controls our oil at the oil scraper. Yep, it's broken clean in half. Right there, look at that. That's the small end of the rod. And our wrist pin. Not looking horrible. I, I don't know what caused this to blow up. It must have hydrolocked. Like, that's all I can really think, is that there was a hydrolock activity and there was coolant or water in that combustion chamber. And then over here, taking a look at the cylinder head gasket, 
I don't see anything that's staring at me in the face that says that this gasket had let go either. It must have though, because this is, that's clean on top of this cylinder, or on top of that piston. It must have had a, a coolant leak into the uh, cylinder head, some, or into the combustion chamber. I don't see any other explanation here. Okay, well, we still have nothing more than a hypothesis for how this blew up. We've got the affected components apart. Let's, um, let's go back to the engine and continue the autopsy. Maybe we'll find some more destruction inside, maybe not, but it's worth a shot to uh, continue to tear apart. Let's pull the crankshaft out next and see if there's any destruction going on with the crank. Plus, we also have more fasteners to harvest. Unclicks. Yeah, these are good ones here. The 13s and a bracket. I don't need the bracket, but I do need the bolts. Yeah, that's good for this side. Let's uh, move up to the top and pull the oil pump off next. Looks like that's gonna be a 10 mil. I think it's just four more bolts on this uh, pump. Ooh, this is a variable geometry or variable displacement oil pump. It's got this uh, pressure solenoid over here on the other side. I'll show you in a moment. Let's get this. Get that off there. Paying no regard to... It's not going to come off easily. Paying no regard to the chain. Get rid of that right now. Goodbye chain. Uh, maybe not. There we go. There's our chain. Jump. Let's see. Over here... It appears that the oil pump is connected to the block with a wire. So let's pull this little sensor business out. That's the connector. Let's see, let's press the tab in and use the pry hammer because everything is a hammer. There we go, that's our connector. And here's our pump with the pickup. That's the pickup sump right there, plastic. And that's the solenoid. This unit here somehow actuates and i'm not super familiar with how these things run that actuates uh, a mechanism inside of the pump that can actually change the displacement i think it turns down oil pressure during low demand times to uh reduce the load on the engine and save some fuel all right moving up a little higher here we're going to go ahead and pull the rest of this windage tray out it's uh, several 10 mil volts again Yeah, not with that gun. I'll rephrase, not with that socket. The extension eats up all the torque. Seriously? Okay, those are tight. I guess they don't want them falling off while the engine's running. So, I do not often need a 10 millimeter socket that is half inch drive, but when you need one, I got one. Tens for everything. Let's see if this one's gonna take it off. That's in there. Yeah, that's half the windage tray. This is designed to prevent oil from splashing up and hitting the crankshaft, causing resistance and reducing efficiency and power output. So that's both of the windage tray pieces. Pull these guys out, set that stuff aside. No longer needed. And we have exposed our crankshaft. From this angle, we can see just how uh, extensive the inspection holes in the side of the block are. We can fit a head bolt through this side, almost. Oh, it's so close. Well, I can fit a head bolt through this side. That side is uh, almost broken through enough. Very, very smashed. So what we need to do is pull the connecting rod bolts off of the, these rod ends and then drop the pistons and rods out through the front or through the top of the block. Then we can unbolt the main caps and slide this crankshaft out. We can hit these guys with the 11 millimeter. Okay, that's one of the mains. Push this guy out through the bottom, just like that broken one. And pry bar. Grab that pry bar here. 
We're gonna tap this thing down with the pry bar device and then catch the piston as it comes out through the bottom. Uh, usually I wouldn't use a pry bar on this. I would use a, like a piece of wood or the back side of a hammer. But since none of this stuff is gonna run ever again, I don't mind smashing it. So there is an intact piston and an intact connecting rod, which is not what we found in cylinder three. We found the opposite of such things. So we're not gonna do this in any particular order. I'm gonna pull the main caps, or the rod caps off, whichever ones are pointed at us. Then we're gonna have to turn the, uh, turn the crankshaft until the rods that we cannot reach have come up to the top here. And uh, then we can hit those ones with the impact, pull those caps off and then drop those pistons out. So what I'm saying, so we've got to do this in some kind of a sequence. So pull, next cap out. Sometimes the bearings will stay, sometimes they'll come with you. Pull, push that piston down and out. Oh, I can't do it by hand. We'll use the hood prop for this next one. Just go in and tap it on down. Maybe we'll find more bent rods in here. Got that one there. That one's in good shape. It does not appear to be bent. So that's two removed. Let's see, I can reach. Yeah, these two are out. That one is number three that we took out originally. Let's turn this crank some. Just push down on the counterweight. Oh, I know what we'll do. We can use the pry bar on the reluctor wheel, which you should never do and turn it like that, that works. There. Couple more fasteners here. Okay, one more main cap, rod cap. That one's not looking too hot. There's a little bit of scoring in there, but that's also not the bearing surface. Okay. Drop this guy out through the bottom. Again, we tap it. I'm reaching down with my other hand to catch the piston. Just knock it right on out. There's another piston and I found more pieces of aluminum hanging out inside of that piston. Look at that. It's just kind of stuck in there. It's very stuck in there. I don't even know how that got in there. Either way, that rod looks okay get the two up on the front side here. We'll pull those guys out next. Spin this guy around. Two more fasteners. Actually, I can reach four more fasteners. That one looks good. And we can send this piston out. That's gonna be on y'all's side over there. Let's tap it down, catch it. Missed it. Oh man, flashlight, gravity down, everything down. Piston, flashlights, I hit my noggin. You guys got hit. Disaster. Anyway, so here is the next piston. I think that's out of cylinder two. Again, no bent rod. Rings are okay, no crack in the piston. All right, that one's fine. And we've got one more here on my side. We can start to work on this crankshaft. Tap it right on out. Got a bearing, that's okay. And one other rod, also okay, nothing wrong with that. Now we need to pull the main caps off, here, 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 and here, and we should be able to sneak this crank out. Seriously? Hmm, tight. 
All right, we'll have to do this manually. Okay, 16 mil socket on the big ratchet, it's half inch drive, and then I will use a bar. This is the, uh, the jack bar for a floor jack. I'll use this guy here to break these loose. Unpickage. Yeah, those are, uh, those are very tight. See the twist in that one? The recoil was so bad it put the ratchet in the opposite mode. It switched it from loosening to tighten. Off to on. Yeah. Yep, same thing with that one. Turn. There we go. Two more. Last one. Unclicks. Good. Main cap trick, watch this right here. These are uh, six bolt mains. We've got, gravity, we've got, those were the two bolts we pulled out for the windage trays, then the two main bolts, and then it's got two more on either side going through the block skirt. So this is actually a six bolt engine. A couple more bolts on the side. We'll take care of those mains. That's four, and then there's four more on that side over yonder. See that one move? Yeah, now they're loose. Can't reach that one yet. Need an extension. But, as I was saying, what we can do, we take our bolts and use that to wiggle the mains out and they serve as a pretty decent handle you squeeze them together and then you can pull so that's our main cap we've got four of those in total come out got that one and again this is not going back together ideally these would all get marked and put back exactly where they come apart. You'd have to do that, actually. You have to do it. Uh, especially with the connecting rods, because these are what's known as a cracked rod. When they uh, assemble these, they actually forge this as one piece and then break the rod and it, then bolt it back together. So each individual rod crack is a unique pattern and cannot be duplicated. Uh, furthermore, you cannot switch a cap from one rod to another rod because they just won't match up because of the crack. One more. 13 on this side of the block skirt. Pull this last one out. Now this thing, this engine has a rear cover on it. I don't know if I've got to pull that rear cover off to get this crank out or not. I'm gonna try to avoid doing that if I can. If I can't, then I can't and it is what it is. Uh, up front, we do have one more timing chain to remove, one more tensioner right here, and then uh, we should be able to get this chain off and walk this crank up and out. Okay, we've got one more application of the Torx 30 bits. Let's get this guy cracked loose, unclicks. Good. It's the last tensioner in the series of multiple tensioners. Here are you. Don't need that. Yep. 
That was an error. It flung oil all over my leg. That was stupid. And this thing should slide right off. Okay, that loses our, our chains and sprockets. More pry bar needed. Let's see if I can't get this stupid little plate off. There we go. Get rid of you. That's the housing for the rear crankshaft seal. Now, there's nothing holding in this crank. Let's go ahead and lift this guy up and out. It's gonna be a two-handed operation because crankshafts are uh, not lightweight. Straight up. There she goes, got her to the bench. All right, back over at the workbench. I do not see any massive visible defects in the uh, in the crankshaft itself, other than some metal pieces here. Don't know what that's from. Yeah, the crank looks good. It's got another bearing stick to it. That. Reluctor wheel, seal area for the rear main. We've got our counterweights. Okay. Another bearing. They like to get stuck to the surface that they mate to. Okay, well the crankshaft is not the cause of the failure. I don't know what made this engine blow up other than it must have had some coolant get into it, into that cylinder, and then it blew up from there. Uh, we couldn't tell through the inspection ports on either side. It's still full of metal. Oh, that's interesting. Looky here. It has some diesel technology built into it. It has piston oil squirters. See those guys? There's oil that runs through this block under pressure and it squirts through these little nozzles onto the bottom of the pistons in order to cool them off. I did not realize this engine had that feature. Yep, yeah, that's it. She's stripped down to bare bones. There's nothing left to remove. Uh, unfortunately, our autopsy did not give us more information that we already didn't know. The engine was blown up. Uh, and it has left with uh, only speculation. And I can, again, only theorize that uh, it got a hold of some kind of coolant or water inside of that cylinder, bent the rod, then the rod fatigued and it cracked and then eventually the rod broke. That's really all that I've got uh, for this particular situation. And I suppose that's all that I've got for this video. So having said all that, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Uh, if you would like to see other videos like this video, um, you're probably not going to find it on this channel, but if you go over to the I Do Cars YouTube channel, uh, that's what Eric does. He owns a salvage yard in the great state of Missouri, and when he has engines that are blown up, if they are of uh, any interest to the audience, he will do autopsies on them to see, uh, see what killed them. So if you want to see more autopsies, again, just go check out Eric. Uh, again, do not forget to tap that like button before you go anywhere. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. End of engine, end of Chrysler, end of Pentastar, end of transmission.